Thank you, friends, for the second, for being here for the second presentation of the GUT Connection that we have entitled The Way to Go. And uh, as always, we will read the disclaimer for you. The, the New Footsteps lecture series are designed to share available information with the general public. They are not to be used as a treatment for individual cases. For online appointments, visit our website at newfootsteps.com.au. Now, we started to introduce our gut, and we started to realize the significance that our digestive system might even start, might, might have to all the parts of our well-being. Uh, we show some images that were maybe some a little bit disturbing for some people. Normally when I show those images, I get people talking between themselves and saying, oh, that, I'm pretty sure that's mine, I'm pretty sure that's mine. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's yours or not. Uh, I haven't used yours, I'm pretty, I'm pretty much sure of that. Uh, I remember one day a lady actually brought her x-ray to, to my clinic and he showed me the x-ray and I said, uh, do, you have an, uh, do you have an appendix? And she goes, yes. I said, okay, I can't find it. And she goes, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've got an appendix. I said, well, I can't find it. And I said, do you have any operation on that area? I said, ah, oh, they operated on a hernia. I said, ah, oh, okay. Do you not have an appendix? I said, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I do have an appendix. They only operated on the hernia. I said, sorry. They operated on the hernia, but you do not have an appendix. And she goes, why not? I said, the reason why you don't have an appendix is because that's the area where you got operated on, that's the area of the appendix. And if you are in a car accident and you've been complaining with pain or whatever, and all of a sudden you pass out, and somebody takes you to hospital, and, they, and you are unconscious, and, they, and somebody says, oh, she was complaining of tremendous stomach pain and around this area here, and they will look at that scar, the first thing that they're going to rule out is what? Appendicitis. They're going to rule it out because you got a mark there. So, you went for a hernia operation, but it is protocol that will take the appendix out because they're leaving a mark and they cannot afford to lie down, assume that you don't have appendicitis when in reality you do have appendicitis and the reason what led them to believe that you didn't have it is because you had the mark. Okay? So just to make everybody relax about appendicitis, by the way, uh, I, my appendix was removed at the age of 12, okay? I'm still here, okay? I'm still here. You do what you, you, you got to do. Uh, and I was 12, I complained of appendicitis. Well, I complained of a small pain here. Sorry, no small pain, very sharp pain here, here, here. And uh, my mom took me to the doctor. The doctor looked at it and said, appendicitis, they opened and they realized that there was a little parasite, some worms there, that actually infected the appendix. So they removed the appendix, uh, and then the very next morning when I woke up from the anesthetics, or the very next time when I woke up from the anesthetics, I forgot that I had a, the operation done on me, so I needed to go to, I needed to get up to go to the toilet, and I just stood up just like that. Oh man, that hurts, hurts a lot. My mom was ever grateful to that doctor. Over the years, we had the same family doctor. I didn't like the guy. You know, I actually didn't like the guy. Not, not because of this experience, but I didn't like the guy. I didn't find that he was really looking for the cause of the problem. He was just straight away with antibiotics for anything and so on. I never liked the guy. But my mom was forever grateful. And, um, and my mom was saying always, he's not such a bad uh, doctor. You know, he got the appendix. Oh, you know, when you had appendicitis, he got that one. He said, Mom, I'm 12 years of age. I'm constipated. I got pain here. I mean, you don't need to be a doctor with 30 years of experience to at least assume that it might be appendicitis, right? So, um, but I got it out. I'm still surviving, okay? And um, I think surviving reasonably good or well, okay? So, it has been said that the average Western column has between 2 and 8 kilograms of putrefying waste due to bad food combinations, refined starches, and sugars. What is the easiest way to lose some weight? <laughs> you can just, just get rid of 8 kilos there. If you have 8 kilos, you're already losing 8 kilos. Now, 
the, 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 there was an occasion, there was uh, a young friend of mine, he was married, and he actually did uh, one of those colon detoxes, okay? One of those colon detoxes. And he was actually going through, and he was just doing everything to the tick, and he, he started calling me and said, I know there's something there, there's something there. And uh, he was a big guy, and he stood up on the scales at night, one of the days, and then in the morning, he felt the urge to go to the toilet, and he went to the toilet, and he poured out so much waste. And then he went back into the scales, and he lost so many kilos from the night to the morning. So many kilos. He felt that, you know, so he called me and said, what happened? And he says, I deliver a baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to actually share, share with you what I call enemy, public enemy alpha. Okay, I'll just use in Greek letters here, alpha, just to show off that I did uh, Greek at university. So, um, alpha. So I want you to look at the screen very, very carefully because I'm going to show you public enemy alpha, okay? This is an enemy of society, it's an enemy against us, okay? We need, and it's a public enemy. It's producing tremendous public health issues. Are you ready? I'll show it to you. called the toilet, the loo, the uh, whatever you want to call it, okay? That fellow there has done more damage than you will even be able to recognize, okay? He was um, invented by what I will call a very lazy carpenter, a very, very lazy carpenter. And this carpenter, for some reason, and for, because of his laziness, he decided to actually put a hole on something that looked like a chair and then he will sit around it for doing his business, okay? Now, when I was growing up, by, oh, by the way, yeah, I'll, go, I'll go to this one here. So there's something happening when you actually sit down. Now, you're all sitting down now and I'm sitting down. There is a muscle called the puborectalis muscle that cho gets choked as you're sitting down. That's actually to facilitate continence because you do a lot of your life sitting and you don't wanna make, sh you wanna make sure that you, you, you are managing continence, okay? So when you're sitting in the car, when you're sitting now, when you're sitting in front of the TV or whatever, there's actually a muscle, the puborectalis muscle that gets choked, it gets moved, literally, okay? So, that's when you're sitting. I want to share with you that 80% of, of colon cancers, if anybody has colon cancer, it will be 80% chances. Now, you still have another 20% chance that won't be in, located in the areas that I'm about to tell you now. But it will be 80% chances that that cancer or that tumor should be located in the area of the ileocecal valve near the appendix and the, uh, around the cecum there, and in the area of the sigmoid. Okay, so on your screen is the, the gray area there. 80% chances that if that person has colon cancer will be on those areas. Now, if you get a hose, you get a hose and you actually blind one end of the hose and then you blind the other end of the hose, okay? and you actually start tapping in one end of the host, the same effect is actually felt, you know where? In right the opposite, in the symmetric, symmetrical opposite of that host. So we have here a very interesting scenario. The ileocecal valve closes, which, mean, which makes that end of that host, and we're going to call the colon that host, that end of that host is now closed, is being made blind. Blind, okay? Now, as you sit down to evacuate, the rectopubal the, the, uh, the puborectalis muscle is actually now choking or blinding the other end. So you actually have both ends blind. And now you are putting pressure. Pressure on what? Imagine you have a door and it's closed. So there's a door here and it's closed and I'm 
pushing the door because I want to go through. You need to put a lot of pressure, isn't it? I mean, you've got two options. One option is put a lot of pressure, so much pressure that eventually, boom, the door will just collapse and you'll go through. What is the other option? Open the door. Isn't that another reasonable option? Why put the pressure on a closed door when you can grab the handle and open the door? Wouldn't that be easier? Less traumatic to the door and to yourself? Yes? So open the door. It makes sense, isn't it? Okay. So, what happens is that we start teaching our children in the way they should go, so when they are old, they never depart from it, right from the beginning. So, there's a little boy that is sitting there with a newspaper, just like that he has done. Okay? And he's there for five minutes, and he's there for ten minutes, and he's there for fifteen minutes, and dad or mom, they check in on him. Hey, little fella, you finished, you finished yet? Uh-uh. Okay. So you go out, five minutes. Hey, little fella, you finished yet? Uh-uh. All right, he doesn't need to go. So you go, you put his nappies or diapers up. You're, you know, you get him up, I'm ready. And then you go to the kitchen. Two minutes later, <laughs> little fella, where are you? Did you just do it now? Do you do it? I mean, you go to your wife and say, I had him there for 20 minutes. He was there for 20 minutes. I just put it up. And he just did it two minutes later in the nappy. Have you ever wondered why? Sometimes animals know better. Okay? Sometimes animals know better. I'll show you how a Spanish toilet used to look in the bars in the bars and the pubs, I don't know, taverns in Spain. You used to get in and you used to find that one on the left and the one on the right. In fact, when I was a child, there was only one, and it was the one on the right, the one, the hole on the floor. That was the only thing. And in Spain, there was not such a thing as you, you cannot be in a bar unless you are under, you are over 18. There was not such a thing as that. In Spain, you know, you'll, when I was growing up, that probably has changed now with laws and, and regulations, but when I was growing up, the little boys were in the bar and they were, they were drinking a little bit of wine because everybody was, you know, the father would get more wine and the boy would have a little wine, you know. Uh, I used to eat at my grandmother's place every Wednesday and they would give me for lunch, you know, Mediterranean diet, you know, good glass of red wine. And then I would just get the red wine, I'll drink the red wine as a little boy, and then I'd eat, and then I'd go to play soccer. It was so fantastic. I used to see so many, so many soccer balls all around. <laughs> because I was just so tipsy. So I was so <laughs> half drunk. Uh, and so in the bar, you used to have those things. And you, your parents will actually teach you, you know, make sure you put your pens all the way down, because otherwise they're going to get wet. So you only had to pay the pen, you only had to put the pens up to here, and then you have to actually do something. You actually need to do that. Okay? And that's how actually it was done. Now, that's how a little boy, a toddler, will either do it, normally will go behind the curtains and he will just either do it standing, or he will actually go and he'll do it like this. So when you see him at the toilet bowl with the newspaper, he's he just doing what dad is doing. <laughs> Okay? Now, when, he, when we sit down, there is a closed door because of the pulling of that muscle to help us with continence. There's actually a pulling and a closed door. So what is another option that we have to use? Open the door. So how do you open the door? Well, you open the door by squatting. When you actually do a squatting, you actually open the door. Now, I don't want you to test, to test this now, but... There's many people that they are 50 years of age and they cannot do this. There's many Japanese people that they come and visit Australia and they go and see the 12 apostles, which are these rock formations. 
in Victoria in, at the um, uh, Great Ocean Road. And they've got different toilets there. They have the toilets for the, for the Aussies, for the Australians, and for the tourists. And then they have a toilet for the Japanese, because you get all these Japanese buses full of Japanese people, elderly people, 70, 75, 80. And guess what type of toilets they got? They got that one there that I showed you before, the one in the hall. And you get 80 years old men, 85 years old men doing this. You go to a nursing home and try to do that with the residents in a nursing home. There's something wrong when we cannot even hold our own weight. When you actually see a child that is playing with the trucks, they're actually like this. They're playing like this. But there's something wrong when we cannot do it anymore. And because we cannot do it anymore, we have to find ways around this, okay? Because we cannot do it anymore. Nathan, would you be able to, 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 give, me, to give me that, that bucket? I'm, we're just improvising. Thank you, Nathan. Say hello to the camera. <laughs> okay. I'm just improvising today to tell you that, you know, a little bit of MacGyver every so often is not bad. Now, when we, when we do squatting, I want you to notice the two areas that are actually getting supported. What are those two areas? The actual areas where 80% of the colon cancers are actually normally found and being located. Those same areas. So, when you are sitting, the... Uh, the, um, that muscle, the puborectalis muscle, is actually closing the door, is, is helping you with, with uh, continence. When you are actually squatting, you're opening the door. Can you see how the door is opened? So when the door gets opened, it's actually already recognized that there is more waste out. So there is an increase in the percentage, up to 30% more waste comes out when you are actually squatting. You know what that means? That every time that you are sitting, there's 30% of waste that are meant to come out that are still in. Is that a good news or bad news? That's bad news because that, that waste is there. It doesn't, doesn't give you anything else but toxins. And now that 30%, up to 30%, it still remains in. When you're squatting, it actually opens the door and allows more evacuation, okay? So, that's a Japanese to toilet, in mo a modern Japanese toilet. It's for both, it's for, um, what do you call it? It's for um, tourists as well as for Japanese. The Japanese will actually stand on that platform on each side of the toilet, facing actually the wall. They will be facing the wall, and they will squat there. Okay, so that's one example. We're just going to show you one improvised example. I'll tell you what I do not want you to do. Okay, I do not want you to do, and, and for, there's a number of reasons for it, okay? There's many people that cannot actually, they have an issue with equilibrium, and they cannot hold the equilibrium. So if, I, if, I'm, if you're going to do this, make sure that uh, you are, um, taking your own risk. It is, so imagine this is the toilet. That's the toilet. Just there. I do not want you to do this. I'm just going to do a squatting. I saw it on a video. And I'm going to get bigger evacuation. Yeah, bigger evacuation from the blood that is going to come out of your ear with the head-on collision that you're going to have on the floor. Okay, and then you're going to be, in, uh, somebody's going to inquire at the hospital, and who told you this? There's a guy in Australia, <laughs> his name is Oscar, you should check his website, okay? So, do not do this, okay? Don't do this. In fact, in Australia, you, we get so many Asian students that on the bath, on, on the toilets there, there's actually stickers of one guy there on top of the toilet bowl squatting and a big red marker around it. Do you know why? Because obviously they make a mess with the shoes. They make a mess there, right? But you know what they're thinking when they come into Australia? They get into the toilet and they said, huh, 
these white people, you know, they, they, they're so high up on themselves, you know? So they just say, okay, but <laughs> they just go on at the top and they just do squatting. They can do what they've been doing all their lives, you know, they're very flexible, they can actually kneel, they can actually squat and do it. It's not a problem, okay? They can do it, let them do it. Do you think they follow that, that, that sign? No, they'll probably clean up afterwards or, or they will just disregard it all completely. You know why? Because if they don't go lack that way, they feel constipated. If they don't go that way, they can't go. I had a lady from, from, um, from the Philippines uh, coming to one of my seminars and when we shared this particular information in this seminar, she said, you know, when I came to Australia, I, I was so determined just to leave Everything that, that reminded me of the Philippines behind, you know, came from a small village and things like that, that I was going to adopt the Australian way in all the way, including that. And she said that she will sit there for hours. She will sit there for hours trying to go, trying to go, trying to go. See, the door is closed, trying to go. And she forced herself and she suffered from hemorrhoids and she suffered from many things because she was determined that she was not going to go and live back like they lived in the village. And years later, many years, many couple, three decades later or so, it comes the Spaniard and it tells her that, in fact, the village wasn't that bad after all, the way they did it over there. Okay? So, I'm just going to improvise here in a much safer way. So, I just got this. There was some paper here, so I got rid of the paper. So, that's your toilet. Sit down. How you doing? Good? <laughs> okay? I just improvised. This is an improvised idea. Uh, you know, there's, uh, this, I mean, this is just a bucket, okay? But there's actually many things out there. I used to get a, a carpenter. This guy was not a lazy carpenter. He used to make these ones for me, okay? You should see the face when uh, I, um, I went to pick up the first one of this. I just, I asked him, you know, how high I wanted it and so on, and he made it for me. And he was, he had a guy working for him. And uh, he said, oh, you should have seen the, guy, the, the young fella that is working for me. And I said, we've got a job to do. And he said, okay, yeah, you need to follow me. You just come, come, come with me. And he said, okay. So he was just following him, and he's wondering, this young fella is wondering, where, where are you taking me? He said, we're going to the toilet. Oh. And he said, okay, I want you to sit there. Just sit there. He said, what? Sit, sit, sit there. Sit there at the toilet. Okay, lift up your legs. Lift up your legs. And the guy's just there <laughs> taking measurements all there. And the young fella is just thinking, are you crazy? Are you nuts? So this was, you know, a very small uh, prototype of many years ago uh, that we used. But nowadays, there's so many things. This is actually a nice one. It's, it's called the Squatty Potty. The Squatty Potty. Okay, and they got different, different heights and so on. And there's just platforms to help with this. So the evacuation comes much easier. Now, when you have the door closed and you put in pressure, you actually put in pressure in the two, at the two ends. You put in pressure in this sigmoid area and you put in pressure back on the opposite area, which is the ileocecal valve, the two areas where the most colon cancers are, tumors are actually located. Okay, so there is pressure there when you're sitting down and you put, if you have suffered from hemorrhoids or you do have hemorrhoids, when you put in that pressure, the amount of pressure that you have to put is much, much greater because you've got the door closed. So it's going to be more likely that your hemorrhoids are going to actually be damaged. At the same time, because 30% of the waste remains in, they are going to continue to work on your compass bin. Do you want columns or compass bins? What do you want? Yeah, okay. Are you nice and relaxed now? You, yeah? Okay. Because if, if you see me relax, you relax, right? So I just made a fool of myself. I've just been pretending to be on, on, a, on a toilet seat and so on. You've seen all that and said, well, he's fine about it. I want to tell you something. People are struggling with these issues, and we don't want to talk about it. And they are seriously struggling. And they are building up a condition that will be affecting all the areas in their bodies 
because of buildup of that compost bin, that buildup of waste, that buildup of toxins, that buildup of inflammation, et cetera, et cetera, that is affecting other parts of the body. But because we're talking about areas such as that, I mean, we do that every day, or at least we ought to, right? This is part of life, okay? So because we, we, we're talking about this in this, in this particular hour, uh, we feel uncomfortable. However, I know that even in your uncomfortableness, this is going to help you, okay? So I'd rather make a fool of myself and tell you than not, not that look very, very, um, very clean and sophisticated and you're not knowing about it. And what I'm sharing with you are meant to be things that are easily adopted. Easily adopted. I want everybody to actually watch a lecture of mine and every hour that passes in that lecture and the new information is being provided, I want that person to say, I can do that. I can do that. We have the weight connection recorded here in the same university here. And every sp step of the way, I heard people saying, I can do that. I can do that. Something that is achievable. Something that can actually be bringing them closer and closer and closer. Okay? To a much better health. So, squatty potty, a bucket, whichever way. If you have a stand there, uh, you know, I had in the house one that, that uh, it is a, a little bit more sophisticated than that. It's made out of uh, fiber. And it is, it is a very nice one. It's very, very solid. And that one, you actually squat. So you actually do a squatting, proper squatting, so you're not actually resting here. It's about this high here, and you actually do proper squatting. The one that I've got in the house. So guess what? When I've got visitors in the house, they all go to use the bathroom, and they all see it. So... I get 15 minutes lecture because they come in and I said, what's, what's that thing that is there? Said, oh, let me tell you about it. You know, there is a muscle that pulls, they close the door and <laughs> I just tell them all about it. It's a great witnessing opportunity. I don't hide it because it's going to get benefit to them. Okay? And we get plenty of testimonies, lots of testimonies of people just doing this very simple thing. The compost bin is being cleaned up. It's a much better opportunity to start your rebalancing of your gut. So thank you very much for your attention, and we'll be seeing you for the third presentation of this series, The Gut Connection. Thank you.